Hello and welcome to another shipwreck video. Now in today's video we're going to be showing you a new site that we found. We found it last year, it's a very old wooden wreck, it's got some old cannons on it and we think that it could be the remains of a ship called HMS Pembroke which was a British man of war which was known to be lost along this coastline here. This is the west side of the Lizard and there's a really good account of the Pembroke going ashore here with very few survivors. And the Pembroke's got an awesome story. It's, it's, uh, we're going to tell you it in this video. And we'll see what you think. We'll show you the evidence that we've got that we think it is the Pembroke. And uh, yeah, see what you think. Okay, so we're all loaded up. It's an absolutely stunning day today. So we're going to go and take a look at this wreck and, and show you what we found. We take a small inflatable out of Mullion Cove, which is one of the few places along this stretch of coastline that you can launch a boat, and we head south towards Lizard Point. We enter the water and begin to search to refine the cannons that we'd seen on a previous dive. The seabed in this area is made up of steep high-sided gullies that are covered in kelp, and it's notoriously hard ground to cover searching for shipwreck remains. Luckily, we know this area well, so we are soon back on the wreck site, which is comprised of a number of iron guns, varying in size, and many are well camouflaged against the surrounding rocks. Some are so well blended in that it is only small orange patches where marine growth has been removed that give them away as not being rock or natural features. Some of the cannon are so worn away that the barrel in the centre is now exposed and it becomes slightly more obvious what they once were. We realised at this point we had made quite an important and exciting new discovery, so it's time to head home and check the records of wreck losses for any clues as to what the wreck site may once have been. The British man of warship Pembroke was a fifth rate warship of 356 tons that was patrolling the channel in February 1693. On the afternoon of the 22nd, Pembroke came across the well armed French warship, the Ville de Saint Malo. A fierce gun battle began, and Pembroke was soon in severe trouble, losing her mainmast, her topmast, and her mizzen yard. The fight continued on and off all night. By morning, Pembroke could only sail on her foremast and bowsprit and was getting short of both powder and iron shot for the guns, so the decision was made to turn back and head for Plymouth. Shortly afterwards, however, another French ship appeared astern. This was the St. Louis of Bordeaux, which gave chase and quickly caught up with them and began to engage in another gun battle. After another two hours of fierce fighting, an enemy broadside brought down the Pembroke's foremast and cut her bowsprit in two. With a great many of her crew dead and injured, and her hull leaking badly from so many shot holes, the surviving crew on the Pembroke had no choice but to surrender, and struck her flag. The French ship took off most of the surviving crew and officers as prisoners of war, and put some of their own crew aboard to try and set the stricken vessel alight. At this point the wind suddenly increased, and the ship refused to burn, and instead was carried away from the French warship, still with four surviving Englishmen and four French sailors who had now been abandoned by their side to the sea. With no sails and very little steering, the stricken ship was blown up into Mounts Bay and would eventually go on to be wrecked approximately one league to the west of Lizard Point, where two of the English and one of the Frenchmen would perish as the ship went to pieces against the cliffs. We decided the site may be of real significance and so reported it to Historic England who in turn sent a team from Wessex Archaeology to investigate. Wessex Archaeology are the designated contractors to investigate new sites 
which may turn out to be of national significance to UK maritime history, and I was lucky enough to be asked along as part of the team. Diving now under HSE legislation, we once again enter the water and temporarily mark the site with a down line, attaching it to one of the cannons central to the site. The entire area is then cleaned of kelp. This kelp will soon regrow, but removing it for now will help greatly in mapping the site and recording the layout of artefacts which rest on the seabed below. The cannon are much clearer now, and some of the features we could not see before have now become visible, such as the position of where the trunnions once were, and the shape and size of the very back which is known as the cascabel, which can give clues to both age and nationality. The next job was to measure the guns, both the length, widths and size of the bore, which we can compare to known examples of other cannon to give an idea of how heavy these guns once were. English guns were once classified by the weight of the size of shot that they fired, so a 12 pounder gun would fire a solid iron shot weighing 12 pounds in weight. Interestingly on the site there were three different sized guns recorded. This would be unusual for an armed merchant ship, and much more typical to that of a warship. The dive is soon over, and it's time to look at all of the evidence that we've accumulated over the last few days diving. Okay, so it's time to have a look now at some of the artifacts which we found on this new wreck site. I'm going to start off with these lead sounding weights. So these were used to put over the side of the ship to see how deep the water was. And yeah, there, there's two different sizes of them. And they're good things to find. These usually tell you that not many divers have visited the site before you. So it's, it's good to find these, but these aren't actually that useful for dating the site. These things have been used for hundreds of years, pretty much the same design. So. They don't really tell us a huge amount, other than not many people have been here. So there's those two, two different sizes of them, different weights. And then we've got this nice little lead panel. Put that a bit closer. You can see there's this really interesting kind of etching on it that's been put into it. And we don't really know what this is for. It's some kind of decorative panel for something, whether or not it was inlet in, a, in maybe a box or something like that. I don't really know. There's no date or markings or any writing or anything on it. So again, interesting but not really that useful for dating. What we did find on the wreck which is useful is this little silver buckle. Now these are really good because there's a known set of these that changed over time so we can compare this to known examples and we can get an accurate date off this. Now I've sent this to experts and they come back with it being almost exactly the right time era of the Pembroke so that is an absolute brilliant find. We don't know if it's a shoe buckle or a belt buckle, but yeah, that's a really cool buckle. And then there's also down there amongst all those rocks, there's these little lead fastenings. Now, I don't actually know what these are. They're, they're like little lead tacks. And I found these on wrecks before, whether or not they're maybe sail weights or that maybe they held leather together or something like that. But yeah, I'm sure someone out there will know what these are. But again, not really that useful, used for a long, long time, but these are all the bits and pieces we found down there so far. I'm sure there will be more bits to find, but nothing obvious so far. Something like a coin or something like that. That would be, that would be absolutely perfect. That would really give us a definite date. But what else is there to suggest that this new wreck site could be that of the Pembroke? Well, we got the position first of all. We know from old documents that the wreck of the Pembroke was a league to the west of Lizard Point. Now this new wreck site isn't quite a leak, but it's, it's certainly getting towards that. 
And the other thing with the position is we know again from old accounts that survivors managed to climb the cliffs here. Now where this new wreck is, right in front of it, is some cliffs which I was able to scramble down right down to the water's edge. There's really not many places along this place of coastline that you can do that. So that's one really good thing. The next thing is the site itself. So on the site we haven't seen a single cannonball yet. Now on wrecks of this age there's usually cannonballs everywhere. We know that the Pembroke ran out of cannonballs or almost ran out of them. So that could suggest that it's the wreck. It could be of course that people have, have salvaged them or, or divers have picked them up. But with these bits and pieces lying just there I'm not so sure. The last thing is the number of cannons. Now there's three different size guns there. That's that's unusual for say an armed merchant ship. Three size guns usually indicates it being a warship. All these bits indicate that it's the right age and the right place for it being the Pembroke but we still just haven't found that one thing yet which which definitely identifies it as being it. So thanks for watching today's video. We still don't actually know if it is 100% the Pembroke or not there's a lot of evidence to suggest that it is. We're hoping one day we still might find that crucial find which might just give it that 100% identification. We haven't found that yet but it may still be down there somewhere in the bottom of those gullies. And yeah, uh, we'll keep you updated. If we find any new information I will add it onto the bottom of this video. And yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe because I've got some good videos coming up. Wrecks all around the Cornish coast. And we'll catch you soon for more videos.